Why do all Canadian self-checkouts have an employee at the self-checkout? I've, I mean, you're never gonna get a defense for Canadian self-checkouts out of me. It is, it's, we, we have not ironed out the kinks in the system yet. The, I mean, the answer is because the self-checkouts break all the time, so they need to have somebody there in order to actually supervise the experience. And it's never because somebody does something wrong. It's always because the machine throws up like a false positive. Alcohol purchases. You know, again, this is like a, it's a Canadian American thing. At least in my province, you can't buy alcohol at a grocery store. So, so that is not an issue. You can buy it on Uber Eats though. That used to be in Pennsylvania forever. Well, I think like in Ontario now, you can like, um, you can buy beer and wine and maybe like low ABV mixed drinks, like a like a seltzer or something like that. I think you can buy those at the grocery store, but in, in BC you still can't. And you know what? It's working because I never see publicly intoxicated people ever. Like all alcohol laws, it, it's been completely successful and has not merely mildly inconvenienced the entire population in order to make a few legislators feel like they're helping. I mean, yeah, I see people like smoking crystal meth uh, outside of the SkyTrain station like literally every single day, but at least I only see like 17 crushed cans of kokanee on my walk to the grocery store. You guys, you're doing a great job. You're help we're helping, we're helping. Ah, it's okay, they're cool, they're doing their best, I'm sure. It's not that puritanical. Like, there's parts in the in the US where, like, you can't buy alcohol on a Sunday, right? Like, that's madness. Although, I guess, increasingly coherent with the fact that the country is sliding into some sort of theocracy. Um, at least you can buy alcohol on a Sunday here. But it would be nice if you could get it at the grocery store. It would save you, like, a damn trip, at least. You taught it, you have to go to a... a state liquor store that was the, the, so canada's kind of like that depending on where you live bc where i live they have provincial liquor stores called bc liquor store but private liquor stores are legal but there's a minimum price that they can set so like they they can't undercut the government stores um by a lot. It's not like they can outcompete the government store just on price pricing pressure. Because I mean, I mean, again, you got to filter it through like the idea of economics, right? Like, one of the reasons that alcohol is so expensive is not because it's that expensive to make. It's because if it were cheaper, people would drink more of it, probably. So. May the government is like, and by making it more expensive, at least we'll like, if we want people to, if we think it's important that people drink less alcohol, we make it more expensive, people will consume less alcohol. I'm not saying it's a good thing. It depends on, you know, your, your worldview, I'm sure. Go ahead and hit me a couple times. You could always just go get hammered in America. I mean, I think if you wanted to go on a bender, the break even point is probably like, you know, if you if you got hammered four days in a row at like a northern Washington motel, you'd probably at that point have made your money back. So if you're doing like longer than that, you probably, you're probably better off uh, staying in Blaine. That's a, that's in northern Washington for the jokes explainers. But in Ontario, I don't know if there's private liquor stores. I don't think there are. When I was in university, if you wanted to go, if you wanted to buy beer, you went to a store that's literally called the beer store. I'm a little nostalgic for it. It's just, it's a store that consists of like two conveyor belts and just smells like a, like a glass bottle. And then you go up to like a, a worker and you go, I'll take a, a two four of McClay's. And then the worker goes, two four of McClay's. And then you start to hear, like if you turn your ear to the conveyor belt, you start to hear, and then it breaches like the curtain and it, it slides out to the front of the store. That's kind of sick. I, I miss that experience a little bit. And if you, yeah, and then your beer's all like shaken up when it comes out. It's kind of a fun store. The other conveyor belt is for returning your empties, by the way, in case you were wondering. So use, it's, it's the opposite. You slide on all of the beers that you've drank you slide them through the curtain, and then the, the beer store employee is like, 
you know, here's like $17 or something like that. And then if you wanted hard alcohol or fancy beers, you went to the LCBO, the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. They weren't too worried about marketing when they named it, which I guess you have the right to do if you're the government and you control who can sell the shit in the first place. But, but we do have private liquor stores in BC, which is kind of sick because, you know, there's stores that cater to like, you know, higher end stuff if you're into that. Stores that cater to, you know, collectors. Like, you don't just walk into the liquor store and there's only, like, four bottles of red wine and they're all, like, Yellowtail. Not I'm not trying to... Macros, I'm not knocking Yellowtail, okay? I'm just saying they do provide you with more of a choice. The beer store got crushed by the decision to sell um, beer in grocery stores. Honestly, though, like, if you'll allow me to say it, the beer store kind of deserve. First off, the beer store is not a charitable thing. Wasn't it like owned by InBev to begin with? It, like it was like a combined uh, like oligopoly from InBev and Anheuser-Busch and stuff like that. I'm kind of nostalgic for it, but that's just because the human brain is like flawed. But also like that store shouldn't exist. Like the only reason that store exists is because it was the only place where you could buy beer, which is a, an insane competitive advantage. As far as, like, business cases go, I don't know if you could do better than, like, what if we just made the only store in Canada where you could sell beer? That's really good. That's gonna get you a lot of attention. But, like, they, they didn't offer anything except being the only place where you could buy a highly desirable product. I think if they had it in the grocery store, it would be ideal. I mean, that's I, one of the reasons I, I like going to an American grocery store, beyond the fact that even with the exchange rate, the prices are, like, you know, 20% lower is you'll be like, oh, while we're here, maybe we could also pick up like a six of, uh, you know, Sierra Nevada or something like that. They don't have the cool conveyors. I'll give you that. I miss the conveyors. Have you ever had Goldschlager? Oh, I've, I've had Goldschlager. Drank a, a decent amount of Goldschlager in my first year of university. The liqueur, the cinnamon flavored liqueur that has little flakes of gold in it. The urban legend when I, and I'm sure it's been around for a while, but the urban legend when I was in um, university was that Goldschlager gets you a little bit more messed up than other alcohols because the gold cuts up your stomach so the alcohol gets into your bloodstream faster. Now, I'm not saying I believed it, but did I repeat it many times? Yes, absolutely. I repeated it as if I believed it, for sure. It's the most insane alcohol myth I've ever heard. What about this? I mean, we've talked about this one a lot, but what about uh, the one my friend had where he said it's illegal to sell this cocktail called a snake bite in England because it makes people too drunk. What was this cocktail? 50% 50 lager, 50% cider. Who would have thought such a simple cocktail could be so potent? He said they call it a snake bite because like you you like drink one and then you stand up and you're like poisoned. Like it's venomous. I love college drinking stories. They're like looking back, they're all so stupid. But you repeat them a, a hundred times the next day. I've done a lot of the college drinking mainstays. I've never chugged the beer through my butt because we, I mean, I was... As stupid as I was in university, I think we all knew that that's the sort of thing that could actually, like, kill you. So I would, you know, if you're watching this, I would suggest not doing that either. Can't, like, that's one where it's like, can't you just get drunk the old-fashioned way? Seems to take some of the fun out of it when you're like, let me get a funnel and, like, I'm gonna do a handstand. Like, that doesn't seem like the right thing to do. I have done, uh, vodka watermelon. My review is, I don't recommend it. I'm actually stupid. I'm officially dumb. I would say that it's a, a waste of vodka and the watermelon. I've done a shower beer and like, I think as a college student, a shower beer has its place. But I will, I'm not afraid to admit that I spoke out against it a little bit when it started to get popular on the internet for like adults. And I'm like, you have to leave some of the college stuff to the college students. Like there's... In college, I don't know if anybody else played this game. In college, some of the stuff that I was doing was bad for my body. 
But I told myself, it's okay, because it's only for four years. It's not like it's becoming a habit or anything like that. Once you start, and by the way, I don't know how true that is, but once you start being like out of college and you're like, I'm going to revisit some of this stuff from my college days, you no longer get to say like, it's only four years. Now you're like a 37 year old dude posting on like r slash shower beer. That's like, cheers guys. And you're like, no, you gotta let, you're like, I'm sorry, but like, you're old. And that, that's like, he's closer to my age than he is to the college student's age. But like, you're old. Let the college students... You had that time in your life, you know, when you could have had like a guilt-free shower beer. Now the shower beer is kind of guilty. Like if you have a, a spouse and a child, you should not be like post on r slash shower beer. You should, you should just acknowledge that's not your role in life for... Maybe if you're like 60, it's almost like less sad. If you're 60 and, you know, maybe you don't have kids in the house anymore and you're like, I'm retired, check it out, I'm having a shower beer on like a Saturday, I would be like, okay, okay, dude, live your life. But if you're like 38 and you're like, uh, you know, got to be at work in 45 minutes but still wanted to do the daily check-in today, here you go, guys, I'm like, ah, I just... Ah, it just it leaves a bad taste to my... I, I, I mean, you could do whatever you want, but th don't be mad when I don't, like, you know, normalize it or whatever. It's the same with all the, the wine ant shit, right? Like, it's wine o'clock. My doctor said I can only have one glass of wine. And then the, the wine glass... Didn't see this coming, did you? Is the size of a whole bottle. Like, I choose to drink, but this shit is, like, actually poison and, like, bad for you. So, like... If an adult posts like a selfie and is like, check it out, I'm drinking some white Zinfandel. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll click the heart button on that. Hope you're doing well. If they're like, check it out, I'm like 42 and fucking hammered. I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. I'm just gonna let that one sim. I'm gonna wait for you to wake up and then delete the tweet in the morning and just, you know, carry it that in my personal brain gamma pocket forever as a judge on your character, but. At what age should I stop getting hammered? Well, like, probably age zero. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what you want me to tell you. At what age does it stop becoming socially responsible? Or, like, socially acceptable? For me, personally, I would say, like, if it's a regular event, early to mid-twenties, if you're, like, if you're, like, 28, and you're, like, I get hammered at least once a week, then I'm, like... I I can I can't laugh at that. I simply have to hit you with a stone face and be like, "Okay, that's fine." How does that make you feel? Minus two, but actually plus two. You grew up in Ontario, though. Yeah, but some of the people that you know, like, were normalizing behavior in Ontario when I was a little kid, are gonna fucking die like of cirrhosis. It just hasn't happened yet. <laughs> not not to be macabre, but like you know, they were like my dad's friends when my dad was in his thirties, and now. They're in their 50s, but they got, like, the kind of wrinkles that, like, would make Gordon Ramsay blush. Like, it's just, they, they don't, they don't look well. What if they're single? Well, I don't know, most of them probably are at this point. I'm not judging, necessarily. I'm just, what, what I'm refusing to do is do what I think a lot of society does, where they go, Cool, bro! I, I'm 33. If one of my college friends was like, Oh, I had, like, eight beers in my room last night, I would, I wouldn't be like... Whoa, that's crazy. I would actually be like, are you all right? Like, I, I drank a whole 12-pack last night and then watched YouTube videos of songs that were popular when I was 15. I would be like, do you need to talk to us? I wouldn't be like, dude, that's a relatable story that happened to everyone. I would be like, look, lots of people have been there, but like, do you need somebody to talk to right now? I'm in this picture and I don't like it. Well, like, if you feel attacked, don't take this the wrong way necessarily, but you, like, you probably should feel, like, a little attacked. It's up to you how you, you know, interpret that information. I'm not saying you have to change your life. I'm just saying, like, I'm not gonna be the dude who's next to you that's, like, keep going, you know? I'm, like, I'm gonna be the dude that's, like, you know that's not good for you, right? Which is fine, you know, it's your life.
make you can make your choices. Like if you're like, oh yeah, but like, did you see that they rescinded the Clean Air Act? I'm like, that's okay. I like I understand like times are tough, but at like the same time, I would rather have like healthy lungs in 2060 or as healthy as possible than like you know put myself even further behind than I'm already gonna be because of my damn gut flora. But I think you could. I think that maybe cool is not the word I should use. I think you can get hammered at any age as long as it's only at appropriate times. Like, even if you're 70, I think you can get shit-faced as long as it's at, like, your college reunion or, like, it's a friend's retirement party or something like that. Like, I just think as you get older, it's like the barrier of entry for getting hammered gets higher. Like, when you're 20, you're like, it's Wednesday. It's a Wednesday in March. You know what that means? Thirsty Wednesdays, bro. It's Wine Wednesday. And then I would say, like, at the age I am now, like, to, to get hammered and, and not feel guilty about it would be, like, it would have to be a reasonably special occasion. It have to be, like, a friend's wedding or, like, I'm on vacation or something like that. Maybe like the first night that my daughter stays over at her grandparents or something like that would do it. Something like that, right? It'd be like a once every like six or eight months sort of deal. And then I think when you're when you're 60, 70, it's like a once every few years sort of thing. You don't have to ever say like, I'm never going to get hammered again. But you know, save them for, for occasions that warrant it. Not just like it's a Friday in, in July. When was the last time you were hammered? It was probably the day, the night before Josh's wedding. I was insanely drunk. So was everybody. At least everybody that I was hanging out with. <laughs> that was like 2019. But I also feel like the, the hammered quotient has gone down because of COVID and having a baby. Like, I'm, I'm not necessarily like the average representation of... of Someone my age right now, although it's not that atypical. Have you ever been blackout drunk? Yeah, I don't know, like like 200 times, <laughs> something like that. Is it too is it too uh, glib to say more times than I can remember? No wonder your gut your gut floor is fucked. That was like 12 years ago, Chad. Okay, I I cut out the very heavy drinking for sure when I moved to Korea. Like, well, I should say about halfway through my Korean. Um, contract so i was like at first i was like life's one big party and then you start to meet people who have been teaching esl for like you know more than five years in korea and you're like you don't look healthy like you don't look like the kind of person that's do you you don't look like 28 year olds back home look like you <laughs> you look like a when you see a photo of like soldiers from the First World War, and you're like, you're telling me this motherfucker is 19 years old? And I think I, I had a moment that was like, okay, so it's not, that's fine. It's not all fun and games. Just slow it down a little bit. Just, just take some care, you know? You can still have fun, but at least have some shame. It's where you, where I think you get into the scary stuff is when people are, are shameless. When there's like a 55 year old dad who's like, I've been drunk more times this week than I've talked to my child. And you're like, that's really sad. That's like the saddest story I've ever heard in a bar in my life. My dad, you met my dad? 